Well, thankfully, they are going to hear the story of the um, shielding people immunosuppressed or immunocompromised and, and look at that and look at the decision making process. Um, I hope one of the things that they're going to be looking at, I'm not sure they will, is how particular groups of people's lives were affected, which would include disabled people who may not have been um, immunocompromised. Um, it's an enormous um it's an enormous task. I think one of the things that mattered for me a lot with the correspondence I was getting was people stopped thinking that reasonable adjustments were appropriate because once you're in an emergency, you just do what you have to do. And I think from some of the, the, the social media groups I'm on for people with my sort of condition, I, I'm seeing that that's changed. And I do hope the inquiry will start to look at that. But in a much more fundamental way, it's really got to look at the breakdown between the NHS and social care, because the real scandal, and that will come out in the, in the inquiry, is what happened to people in social care. Absolutely appalling. And it, it has to come out in detail and lessons have to be learned. And I think, to be honest, it's much more about the way uh, we view social care in this country and governments of all colours over the last two to three decades have stopped thinking about how social care works and how it is funded. And it's being blamed for systemic problems about funding and about the way people operate and the way the NHS and social care interact. If the pandemic inquiry can do some pointers towards that, that starts to change that attitude, that will be good.